Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Uh, also, the podcast is on DwyerBoxingNews.com. You know, I made a video on this fight already, and I expect Amir Khan to win the fight. Why? Because Khan is gifted offensively. I believe uh, Chris Algieri is going to try to beat him from the outside in. In other words, Algieri is going to try to outbox him from distance, and I believe that's going to be hard to do because Amir Khan's hand speed is that blinding, right? I believe that when you're fighting a guy with a good jab, he has a lot of hand speed. He's blessed with great legs, right? I think it's tough to get through that hand speed storm, right? Coupled with movement on the back end behind the hand speed to actually win the fight, especially when you don't have a big punch. But at the time I made that video, and I still believe Amir Khan wins this fight, but at the time I made that video, I did not realize that Chris Algieri is now with Sergei Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson. So let's get away from the prediction and just talk about the fight. Okay? Because the fight just got a lot more interesting. And I'm going to uh, get way off the mainstream here. Let's talk about some hokey things just based on observation that are going to sound laughable, but hey, you know, I'm just telling you what I think. You think for yourself, right? I believe Amir Khan is hardwired. I think that's one of his problems. In other words, he's the computer program that automatically runs on startup. Right? You start up your computer, this program just starts running regardless of whether you want it to or not. Right? Amir Khan has predetermined combinations. I don't believe he reads the terrain that well. I believe he comes in and then I believe he just starts executing. Right? He's hardwired. You know, it's hard for him to move his head on demand. Because that's not how he thinks. You know, the guy who comes in and he's going to throw fastballs, regardless of who the batter is. Right now, I believe Chris Algieri is on the other side of the street. I believe Chris Algieri is what I call adaptive reactive. In other words, I believe Algieri is reading guys right what he throws let's say if he were a pitcher is gonna differ from batter to batter in other words he might throw fastballs if you can't handle the fastball but if you can I believe Algieri is gonna throw other pitches you might never see a fastball I believe Chris Algieri is gonna come in and he's gonna be reading Amir Khan. Now where John David Jackson comes in is Jackson's fighters tend to be very aggressive. Right? You know, in spots. In other words, you won't see Sergei Kovalev run across the ring and start unloading on a guy, but what you will see is Kovalev determined to land his own punches in a round, right? Waiting for an opportunity where he can open up with both hands. So, the challenge for Chris Algieri is to incorporate in his game, because he's blessed with great legs. Understand, Algieri, in my opinion, has better legs today than Floyd Mayweather. He's blessed with great legs. The question is whether Algieri can, instead of fighting outside in, can hover, fight a Daniel Gill type fight, 
where he's not too close to Amir Khan to get caught up in a lot of hand speed and stuff like that. He's not close enough to get methodically beaten with a jab and hand speed, but he's not too far away where, you know, the action's slow and the guy with hand speed is impressing the judges, right? He needs to be close enough to Amir Khan to actually turn this into a chess match. Then he needs to be able to jump inside, in my opinion, right, and empty the gun during lulls in the action. In other words, if Amir Khan is coming out programmed, Right, If he's programmed and he's doing the same things over and over, let's say he falls into bad habits. I understand Virgil Hunter is trying to make him a little bit more fluid. But if he comes out and if he's doing the same things, regardless of the temperature in the room, right? the question for me is whether Chris Algieri, in the middle of a hailstorm of hand speed, can patiently crack his code, take advantage of things, mistakes, that Amir Khan is going to make time and time again as he fails to adapt to the situation, right? Let me talk about one of my favorite fighters, right? Uh, Julio Diaz. Uh, you really need to track this guy's career. I thought he outboxed Keith Thurman until Keith Thurman broke his rib. Well, he fought Amir Khan. They're in the middle of the ring. Julio Diaz had his moments actually drops Amir Khan in that fight. And keep in mind, the Julio Diaz who fought Amir Khan wasn't far removed from retirement, wasn't prime Julio Diaz. Right? Prime Diaz would have given Amir Khan even more problems. Right? Because Algeria is now with John David Jackson, and because Sergei Kovalev, another John David Jackson student, is excellent at getting close enough to you to hurt you badly, to throw big shots, but yet being far enough away from you to not get clinched, right? And because Algeria is fighting a fighter who's really a pattern fighter, Right? Khan goes into patterns. Right? It's not like Khan is looking at you and wondering, is he a fastball hitter? I'll be watching this fight wondering if Algeri has time to think and is able to then turn what could be a sprint into a chess match. Right? This match is riveting on a host of levels. Right? Let me say this too. You know, Algeri's a pretty good fighter. He had a hard time against Manny Pacquiao because Pacquiao's an outlier. Right? Huge puncher. Short guy. Southpaw. Odd angles. Right? Algeri is a slow starter. Knocked down twice against Richland Pavotnikov. Right? As Algieri is trying to figure out the angles on Manny Pacquiao, Pacquiao decked him. He got hurt early, never fully recovered. Right? Amir Khan's taller. The sight lines are different. The angles are more conventional. It's not a 5'6 guy who you're looking at, then suddenly the guy steps in and bam, that left hand has you down. Then you get up, you're woozy, and here's this guy coming back with that left, and you haven't figured out the angle. Right here, it's going to be a little bit different. He's going to be facing another righty. He's going to be facing a guy who's around his height. Right? And so the question is, you know, can he figure out the angles on Amir Khan? Can he get through the beginning of the fight? Khan's a fast starter. Right? People forget he drops Marcus Maidana early. Can he make it through the beginning of the fight, crack Khan's coat, hover around Khan, and then dissect him? 
right? Because Khan's predictability, his lack of adaptability, actually dampens his speed if you figure out his pattern, right? A fascinating fight to watch is Khan against Lamont Peterson, right? Khan starts that fight fast. Now, however you think that fight should have gone, right? Khan gets some point deductions. The scoring is razor close. The fight's in Peterson's backyard. It's interesting that Peterson makes adjustments as that fight goes along to where you don't even notice Khan's hand speed by the eighth round of that fight. Right? Can Algeri get there faster? Right? Can Algeri avoid fighting an Arislandi Lara fight where he's jumping out of the pocket? I think he loses that fight. Can he instead fight a hoverer fight where he's around the pocket? forcing Khan to actually deal with him, right, turning Khan, and then using his own hand speed and legs. He has the legs to pull it off. The question is whether he has the knowledge base. So to sum up, I expect Khan to win this fight. That's how I'm betting the fight, right? My recommendation here is to take Khan to win the fight, right? But... Pay attention to what's happening in Chris Algieri's corner. There is a possibility, just based on his trainer, right? And just based on Algieri's own foot speed and his adaptive, reactive nature, that Algieri figures out a way to neutralize Khan's speed and doesn't have to run in the fight. Right? I think this is going to be riveting. It's happening later today. And it's Friday. Right? It's happening later today. This is not a weekend fight. In the United States, it's going to air on Spike TV. I encourage everyone to watch it because I think style-wise, this is going to be interesting. Right? Amir Khan is blessed with above-average foot speed. He's fighting a guy who can match him in foot speed. Right? Amir Khan has the hand speed advantage. But Amir Khan is a little predictable. Right? The question, you know, I believe that's why the Floyd Mayweather people are looking at him seriously as Floyd's next opponent. That and Ramadan. Right? The idea that Amir Khan won't be able to fully trained for a September fight. You always need to pay attention to stuff like that. Right? Algeri's a very cerebral fighter. As I said, he's not going to throw fastballs to a fastball hitter. Right? He has one of boxing's best trainers in his corner now in John David Jackson, who trains other elite fighters. You saw the game plan Jackson came up with for Kovalev against a guy Jackson fought when he was a professional boxer, Bernard Hopkins. I encourage you to read Bernard Hopkins' post-fight comments. Just Google them. Following the Kovalev fight about John David Jackson. Right? Hopkins, I don't believe, has ever been that complimentary about a game plan against him. About a trainer putting together a game plan against him. Right? John David Jackson is a bit of an alchemist. Right? He makes gold. Here he has a fighter blessed with great feet. Right? Who is big, is cerebral, can make adjustments against a fighter who is a pattern fighter, a little bit hardwired, doesn't really move his head that well isn't the kind of guy who shows up and fully reads the lay of the land. Right? Khan these days is going to be a fast starter. I know he was a slow starter against Breedis Prescott. But Khan's fights have a certain pattern. Right? So, uh, riveting fight, I strongly recommend people take a look at this. Right? It's hardwired against adaptive reactive. Right? It's hand speed against 
cerebral footwork, and adaptability. It's going off later tonight. I hope you give it a look. Amir Khan, who I think wins, against Chris Algieri, who now has John David Jackson in his corner. Let me say this, too. You know, you want to watch this fight just to see where Algieri is. Right? If Algieri loses the fight, but looks appreciably better than the guy who beat Richland Provotnikov and the guy who lost to Manny Pacquiao, then in the loaded 147-pound division, he's going to be someone you need to figure out and scout. Right? He's going to be someone you're going to have to consider, given the names involved, at 147. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.